Hello, my name is Igor and this is my second video where I'm talking about 3D printed masks for air filtration. In the first one I was talking about uh, filters, uh, about bacteria on the surface, how to clean your mask and how important is the sealing. We have three types of the sealing. The first one is between filter and filter holder. My solution, uh, what I'm using is the hot glue. With hot glue I am connecting permanently the filter to the filter holder and that will avoid air to go around the filter. The second ceiling is between filter holder and the mask. Much better solution is this where, where, you can, uh, where I have a thread and you can screw on the filter holder because the connection will be much better and you can use some kind of o-ring for better sealing. And the third one is why I created this video is the ceiling between mask and your face. This is my first mask I didn't print my, for myself. I downloaded it from Tingerverse with slightly modification. I have a good ceiling, but this is how my face looks like, looks like after two hours of wearing it. My co connection between my face and this mask is on this edge. And as you can see out of these lines, I have good connection, good ceiling, but it's not comfortable. I couldn't wear it for six, seven, eight hours, for example, if it would be necessary. So that's why I decided for my wife to, uh, to 3D scan her face and to use that surface to create this mask and it will have very good ceiling and it will be much comfortable because here we have much bigger surface for aligning uh, to the face. Here you can see the content so you can jump to the any part you would like to see. First I will talk about 3D scanning. I am using an Xbox Kinect but I will give you some tips if you want to try the scanning using a photogrammetry by taking the photos and stitching them together to get some uh, 3D object. In second part I'm preparing the surface using a mesh mixer, that's also a free software. And in third part I am using that surface in Fusion 360 where I will design this mask. I will show you two designs, one is a little bit overkill which I, I actually 3D print here, but I will show you a much simpler solution for the design. Okay, let's get started. Here you can see my 3D scanning process. The object has to be in one place, staying still, until I go around it with my sensor. I need only the front of the face. You can see the full scanning process down in the corner. The sensor I'm using is Xbox Kinect. And the end of it, it looks like USB, but it's not. So you have to buy a separate adapter for PC. And uh, this is the end of this plugin, so you can see it has connection for the Kinect. Where you can plug in that cable. And the other is the USB which goes into your PC. And don't forget to buy the version which has the proper plugin for your country. The software I'm using is the Scanet. And I'm using the free version. The biggest problem with the free version that it is limited to the 5000 polygons, but it will be enough if you correct my, if you follow my steps described uh, after this. And on their page you can find the hardware requirements. This is the version I'm using, so I have to download the SDK version 1.8, not 2.1. And of course I need up to date drivers for GPU. And after I finished the scanning process, then I can continue. First, I have to check that object is in this boundary box. Well, here I don't have to do anything. So let's go to the next step, which is very important. Here I have to crop out everything which I'm uh, sure that I don't need. So I have to move the object and everything below this blue surface will be cut out. This is important because we don't know, we don't want those unwanted polygons to be in our object because we are limited with the 5000 polygon in the free version. It's important, don't use this fill holes tool because it will add a lot of unwanted polygons to our object, which we don't need now in this case. Here on the simplify, you can see uh, the number of the faces here. 24,000 is still too much, so I have to crop a little bit more. I don't need this hair part of the face. Then again, 
check okay much better 17,000 but uh, let's crop a little bit more from the top of the head and I don't need so long neck neck here and then uh, we can go to the share tab and we have to export the STL file and let's change to the scale to the millimeters and we can save this STL file which I will import into mesh mixer few tips for those who want to try 3D scanning with photogrammetry. I tried this method. It's the process when you take a lot of pictures around your face. You can do it with the, even with the smartphone and you can stitch them to the, get the 3D object. I tried, but the problem I had when I imported the, to the Fusion 360, I don't know the exact scale because it's not easy to measure some two exact points on your uh, face, on your head and get that as a reference when you import to the Fusion 360, it's not too accurate. But the idea I got now when I'm editing this video is to put some box, as maybe use a stick tape, when I'm scanning it, because I need anyway the lower part of the face for this project. And then you have exact reference for the length when you import to the Fusion 360, so you can scale it properly to get correct size. I will try it in the near future. If I will success, I will create a video about it, of course. But now let's go back to our project and import our STL to the Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is a free software. So first step is to import the file and then, well, uh, I will transform it. So to move it into the working area. Then optional, even here, you can do some additional croppings. But it's optional maybe because you can do it everything in the, uh, the scanet software. And then a very important part, we have to extrude our surface to get three-dimensional object. And of course, don't forget you have to extrude it in proper direction because inside of the mask of the face uh, has to be in correct size so we have to go extrude outside and we have to enable the normal here to get the constant thickness of this object and our mask is now prepared the surface for importing into Fusion 360. Optionally, you may upscale it by 1% to be sure that it will fit to your face. Uh, this depends on your 3D printer and the shrinking of the material. And this is version 360. We have to import this STL file saved in the mesh mixer. And now this is a surface. And to, to convert it to the files, this is mesh, to, to convert it to the body, which we can process in the Fusion 360, we have to turn off the design history. And then we have here the option convert to B-Rep. We have the warning that now it has, I don't know, 10,000, but it can handle this number of the polygons, the Fusion 360. And now this is the body which we can use in our project. And uh, after this, we can enable the design history. Because it's from here, it's, it will be much easier to finish our design. So I started with the, uh, drawing a sketch, uh, this shape, and I extruded this shape so I get the object. And when I cut that object from the mask, I get these new forms. My next step was uh, drawing these shapes. And first I create a new body by with a loft, with two outer shapes to each other. I need some experiment to, to find this shape here at the back. And then, next was trick I found that basically now this option. Uh, I used the split body. The cutting tool was the mask and it cut this new uh, body into three pieces. So I don't need these two pieces, only this one here. Then I, I use a loft tool to create this inner part, inner shapes, because uh, this will create a hole inside this mask. Here it is. 
Then I extruded this part, I created a thread on this here and also I created this grid and almost my mask is ready. I measure in a slicer that some uh, I have some too big overhangs because I want to print it on this surface surface and I added here some kind of supports so this can be printed without with overhang without using any 3D printing supports here. Then I added these holders for the strap and then I added a filter holder. So this is how it looks like in a section view. So this can be screwed on on this and also I created here a new object it's a ring which will be printed in Obitech uh, soft PLA which is quite a, a rubbery material this will be for sealing also it, it has a food grade certificate so I don't have to worry about that and I'm using the multicolor 3d printing where I can change colors in the same layer uh, it was descriptive in one of my previous videos a link will be in the description and also I decided to use a HEPA filter here so I will cut a, a square and I will insert it here but also this design it's easy it can be modified to use some flat filters with the circle okay let's 3d print this Let's see the quick design version. First import the mesh and then we have to disable the design history and then we can convert this to mesh to B-Wrap and then I have to create a tube which will go through this mask and then I will split this tube using a face shape as a cutting tool and the rest is up to you, so you can design some tree at the end, but basically this end of the tube is perfectly aligned to your face. Let's preview the printing in the slicer. I'm using the Prusa slicer. And I printed this mask in PLA with 0.2 millimeter layer height. Later I will coat it with the epoxy resin for better cleaning. And this is the filter holder. As you can see here, I use that multicolor 3D printing technique where I replace the filament manually so I can print two layers with the Opitech soft PLA for better sealing. You can find in the description my video where I explain that. And this is now the printed printing process. It took me a little bit more than three hours for the mask. Hmm, this was a very big overhang, but it was printed correctly inside. And this is the filter holder now. And at this moment the M600 G code command was executed. This means the manual filament change. So here I replace the PLA with the Obitech soft here in black color. So this will be some kind of o-ring for better sealing. And after two layers of the of this Obitech filament, I go back to the PLA. And the rest of the filter holder was printed in this white material. And in this case, I don't have separate to put some o-ring here inside the filter holder because now it is part of this object. This is for sealing Obitech soft PLA. It is time to put the filter inside the filter holder. I'm using the HEPA filter. I was talking about the filters more in my previous video, so you can check there if you didn't saw that yet. And for better sealing between filter and filter holder, I'm using a uh, hot glue. 
and then I can screw on the filter holder to the mask and I know I will have a good ceilings. Thanks to that Obitex soft PLA which will basically replace the o-ring here in our case. And it's time to test it. So my wife don't like to talk in front of camera but she told me that uh, she feels that it is very comfortable because it fits to her face perfectly and she could wear it a few hours if necessary and we also test the ceiling so we, she has very good ceiling between mask and her face. Well, it was really a pleasant surprise to see that the precision of the Xbox Kinect sensor is good enough for this kind of 3D scanning. And this gave me some ideas for future videos. For example, I will probably 3D scan my hand to 3D print some kind of support or fixer. Well, anyway, thank you for watching and uh, take care of yourself. Bye!